Okay, so today I'm gonna be showing you some tips and tricks for Blender that I've picked up over the past two years of learning 3D. If you enjoy this video, leave a like and consider subscribing to my channel. You can enable cavity and set the type to both in the shading dropdown to get an ambient occlusion effect in solid mode. It makes it way easier to work on complex models and it looks pretty sick too. If you've made some changes to your Blender project and want to save them to the startup file, you can do so by going to File, Defaults and hitting Save Startup File to save your scene. Now you could start your projects with a default tube. The best way to make tubes or pipes is to spawn in a primitive of your choice, going into edit mode and pressing the M key. Select at center. This way you'll get a single vertex you can now extrude into whatever shape you want. Bevel the corners and convert the object to a curve. Inside the object data properties, you can just increase the bevel depth. Shade smooth and that's a pipe. If you have problems beveling parts like this one, go into the bevel window and switch the mitre router to arc. It'll fix the issue. This is also possible in the bevel modifier settings. These curved node connections can be enabled by opening the preferences, going to themes, node editor and increasing the noodle curving value. I usually like to keep it at 5. In case you don't have a numpad on your keyboard, you don't have to rely on the emulate numpad feature to get into orthographic view. The better way is to rotate your view while you're holding alt. I actually use this method even though I have a numpad, it's just way faster. Have you ever wanted to create an orbit shot for your animation, but didn't know how to animate the camera? Well, you could just spin the whole scene, but the cleaner method is to parent your camera to an empty and keyframing the empty. There you go. H is the hotkey for hiding the selected object, but did you know that Shift H hides everything but the selected object? This can be pretty handy when working on larger models. So you want to hide objects in your render, but not in the viewport and vice versa. This is possible by going to the top right corner and enabling these two options. Now you can toggle the viewport and render visibility of the objects. There is no obvious way to delete materials in Blender. Don't ask me why, but you can go to the outliner and switch from view layer to blender file. There you will find a material tab. Just right click and hit delete on your material. Decals are a great way to add some extra detail to your models. I got these ones from Megascans and just projected them onto a plane. Now you can stick them to any surface. The decal doesn't need a shadow, so let's disable it under ray visibility in the object data properties. It also works for graffiti. The tree models you can buy online are usually pretty high poly. What I do to improve performance in nature scenes is rendering the trees in another blend file with similar lighting, and then I only import an image of the tree. This method doesn't work for animation, but in stills you don't notice a difference to real 3D trees. You can set the viewport samples to zero to disable the sample limit when previewing your render. I use this feature to roughly estimate how many samples I need for my final render. The viewer node in the compositor lets you view your effects, but there is a better way. Just open an image editor window and select the render result. Every modification I do is now instantly visible right here. Volumes can improve your render significantly, but they take forever to render. However, there is a way that doesn't increase your render time at all. 
the mist pass. It can be enabled in the view layer properties. In LookDev, click the shading drop down and select the mist render pass to preview the effect. Go to mist pass under the world properties and set the start and depth. The close objects should be black, the distant ones should be white. After rendering, mix the image output with a mist pass like this. By using a color ramp, you can tweak the fog intensity. Okay, so that's 15 Blender tricks I use every day. I hope you learn something new. See you next time.